a geometry. So we're moving on to 7.3, which is proving triangular similar. Before we do that, I just want to make sure we know the difference between triangle that are congruent and those that are similar, okay? So the congruent triangles is a review from before. Just remember again that we have three angles that are congruent, meaning they're exactly the same, which are marked here on our picture for us in colors telling us which ones are congruent to each other. And then remember that our sides are also congruent. So all three sides need to be the exact same. So let's say if this guy was four, this one is four. This is 10, this one's 10, three, and three, or whatever it is. Just remember they're identical. They're exactly the same size. They're exactly the same in every way. They are congruent. Now, similar triangles, on the other hand, have three angles that are congruent. Again, we can see from our picture here, I have 60s, 60s, 40s, and an 80 and an 80. So my three angles are the exact same, but the difference again, guys, is that your sides are proportional. So you should always have one that is a small and a big one, right? You should have a smaller triangle and a bigger triangle. They're similar, but one's a shrunken version of the other one, or one's a larger version of the other one, right? They're just similar, okay? So now let's move on to our notes here. So again, to reiterate, for two polygons to be similar, corresponding angles must be congruent, and corresponding sides must be proportional. Okay, so kind of back to last chapter when we were proving triangles are congruent, we had shortcuts. We kind of had the same thing here. If I want to prove triangles are similar, we have three different shortcuts that we can use. We have the angle-angle similarity. So for you to write that as a shortcut, again, just be angle-angle, because that's AA, stands for angle-angle and the similarity sign. So I have two triangles, and they have two angles that are congruent, so the exact same, then those two triangles are similar. Okay, the next shortcut, side, angle, side, but this time remember it's not congruent, so they're similar, so side, angle, side, similarity. So that means I need to have two sides that are proportional. So let's say this one is one and this one's two. Here's my other side. Let's say this guy is three, this one would have to be six. And then the angle between those two proportional sides are congruent. So kind of like before, side angle side, but your sides aren't the same length, they're proportional. Okay, and then the last shortcut we have is the side, side, side similarity. Again, side, side, side similarity. So all three of your sides are proportional. Okay? So let's say I made this guy one, two, and three. And we'll say this one is four times as big as the smaller one. So the these sides would be four, eight, and twelve. It's just a bigger version. Now let's practice identifying these. So maybe on the top of your paper I'd write, we have angle-angle similarity, side-angle-side uh, -side similarity, and side-side-side. -side. The other shortcuts that we learned about before don't work. It's only these three. Okay, so number one, or number A, are the two triangles similar? How do we know? Let's first look at what they're giving us. Angle R is congruent to angle N. And then I have two right angles which we know are congruent, so yes. By angle, angle, similarity. Now let's go on B. Are these two triangles similar? Well, again, we're just given a bunch of angle measures, so let's find the missing ones to see. So 40 plus 80 gives me 120. What's left over? 60 degrees. 
down here, 45 plus 40, 85. And then we take that away from 180 and we get 95. So do I have angles that are congruent here? Well, I have one pair, but I need two. So that's not enough. So no, the triangles are not similar. No either, guys. Okay, let's try another one. So now this time we're given sides. So remember, sides need to be proportional. So if I pick 10 on this side, what side does that correspond to over here? So again, 10 is the smallest side. So what's my smallest side on this one? Well, that's five. So 10 over five, what does that reduce to? Two over one. Okay, now if I pick my middle side, which is 24, my medium length on this one is 12. Well, if I reduce that, I'm gonna get two over one again. So, so far, so good. And then my last one here, my longest side is 26. My longest side on here is 13. So again, I get two over one. So I hope you guys notice that I get the same ratio to my side. So that's my scale factor. So yes, by side, side, side similarity, the triangles are similar. And then tells us if they are, write a similarity statement. So that's just kind of writing like a congruent statement. I'm going to say, Triangle K R S is similar to what triangle? Remember, order matters. P, uh, I think that was the letter C, I think it was. L D. Okay, now let's check. Number B, or letter B. So on this one, I think it will help you if you draw out these two triangles separately. So if I start off with smaller one here. S U T. I know that this guy is 12 and this one is a 10 and that one's 12. And I have this larger one here. So draw that one out. V R T. Now you gotta look what is this whole side measurement? Not just 4.8, it keeps going. So it's 4.8 plus 12, which gives me 16.8. And then this whole side over here, it's more than just 4, it's 4 plus 10, which is 14. So now let's look at what we have. So we notice that they both share angle T. So they have one angle. Now let's see if my sides are proportional. So if I check ST 10 over 14, I get, if I reduce 5 over 7. And then if I have 12 over 16.8, so we get, we're going to get a decimal, which is 1.4, but if you type in 5 divided by 7 in your calculator, calculator you also get 1.4. So do you guys notice my sides are proportional? We got the same thing. So by side angle side similarity, my triangles are similar. So side angle side. And then I have to write the similarity statement. So triangle RTV is similar to triangle STU. Alright, same thing here. Determine if they are similar, if so, or a similarity statement, and then explain our shortcut. Alright, so let's see what they give us. I have a 30 degree, 30 degree, and a right angle, and a right angle. So hopefully you're thinking, yes, angle, angle, side similarity, or I lied, angle, angle, similarity. And then remember to answer the question, write a similarity statement. Triangle ACB is similar to triangle, let's see, here's the 
Now let's check out two. So I know nothing about the angle, so now I have to see if my sides are proportional. So let's start off with the small side. That's usually what I do because it makes this helps me stay in order. So if I have eight on that one, the small side of this triangle is four. So I need two over one. My medium side length on this guy is ten. My medium side length on this one is five. So I get two over one. And my largest side in the middle, 13 over 6. I do not get 2 over 1. I get 2.166. So therefore, not similar. Okay, now looking at these two triangles on 3. We notice, hopefully, that you're thinking they're equilateral, right? And we know that all equilateral triangles are congruent or are similar. So yes, by side, side, side similarity. Triangle QEU is similar to triangle SIO. So we just know that all equilateral triangles are similar. Try these three on your own, pause the video, and then check your answer with mine. Yeah, I'm going to go over the answers now. So on number four, if we find our missing angle here, I find this to be 110. If I find my missing angle on this one, I find it to be 50. So yes, angle, angle, similarity, triangle, A, B, C. Similar to triangle RST. Looking at number five here. So I'm given two sides and angle, so let's look. I can see that angle M is congruent to angle K because they're both 70. Now let's see if our sides are proportional. So if I pick the smaller side on this one, I get four, and on this one, I get two. So that reduces to two over one. And on this guy, if I pick my larger side, it's 6, and my larger one on that one is 3, which also produces 2 over 1. So yes, by side, angle, side, similarity, they're similar. And no, I hope you guys caught that. You guys see how this angle here is not in the right spot? Because it's supposed to be side, angle, side, whereas on this triangle here, it's not the included angle. So no, not similar. Maybe make a note. It's not the included angle or not the right angle. All right, here guys, and the last one, we have a couple pairs of isosceles triangle because I have two sides that are congruent. So we know that the base angles of isosceles triangles are the same. So we can find out what that is. If we call this guy x and this guy x, then I know that 180 has to equal 40 plus x plus x. So 180 equals 40 plus 2x. Subtracting over, and I divide. So I find these angles to be 70. Oops, I'm going to put my pen. But then looking at this triangle here, I also see that my vertex angle is 40. So then wouldn't that make my two base angles here also 70 degrees? So now my triangles are similar by angle angle similarity because I have angles that are congruent in both triangles. So triangle. EAC is similar to triangle XQR. Doing great, guys. Keep it up. We're almost done. Okay, so here, where is it? Hold on. Let's see if it's down here. No, it's not here. Okay. I don't know where this.
this thing is up on the top of your notes, but let's look at it. It says essential understanding. Sometimes you can use similar triangles to find lengths that are not easily measured using a ruler or other devices. So the trick to this is called an indirect measurement. So that's what we're going to use here to solve this example. So let's look here. It says before rock climbing, Darius wants to know how high he will climb. He places a mirror on the ground and walks backward until he can see the top of the cliff in the mirror. And I will show you this sometime next week. This actually works. Um, now we just need to find the height of our cliff. So first we need to decide, do I have congruent, or excuse me, do we have similar triangles? And we notice that I have a right angle here. I can't really see this color. And I have a right angle there. And then this angle right here, guys, is called the angle of incidence. And those are always congruent, okay? So yes, these triangles are similar by angle, angle, similarity. So now let's see if we can find out how high that cliff is, okay? So let's make some room here. So Darius is 5.5 .5 feet tall, and he is six feet away from the mirror. Now let's look at our cliff. I don't know how tall this cliff is, so we're going to call that X, but I know the mirror is 34 feet away. Now since the numbers are just written in my notes, I need to borrow a calculator here. Okay, so now just cross multiplying like we've done so many times. I'm going to get 6X and 5.5 .5 times 34. I get 187 divided by 6. Yeah, oh, there it goes. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see here. 187. 31.13 feet. Why is it not saying how it is? Okay. So if you're ever out in the woods and want to know how something is, you can this method to see how tall a tree is, a cliff, whatever it might be. Okay, let's practice another example. It says Benjamin places a mirror 40 feet away from an oak tree. So I think a picture is worth a thousand words. So here's my oak tree. Here's my mirror. So it was how many feet? 40 feet. Then he said, it says he stands a distance of five feet from the mirror. So here's Benjamin, and he is five feet away from the mirror. He can see the top of the tree in the reflection of the mirror. It tells us that Ben is five feet, eight inches tall. What is the height of the oak tree? So now we're told that Ben is five feet, eight inches tall. And then we want to find out how tall our oak tree is, so this becomes our variable. So here we have a right angle, here's our right angle there. And I remember this angle of incidence, guys, they're congruent, so I have similar triangles. So now I can set up a proportion to find how tall the tree is. So let's first change. I'm going to change everything into inches because it will make our lives a lot easier. So five feet is actually 60 inches. Five feet eight inches is 68 inches. And then 40 feet is 480 inches. Now when I start the proportion, I'm going to have how tall Ben is of so 68 inches over 60 because that's how far away he is from the mirror. Don't know how tall the tree is, so that's x over 480 inches. That's how far away he is from the tree. Now we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to get 60x equal to 32,640. Then divide by 60, I'm going to get x equals. Equal 
total 544 inches. So since we don't typically talk in inches in that um, large of a number, well, how many inches are in a foot? 12, so we get this guy divided by 12, and get 45.33 feet. That's how tall our tree is. So again, draw a picture, it'll help you set up the proportion, and then you just solve like we've been doing before. Now our last one today, it says, why are the triangles similar? If they are, solve for x. Well, I'm going to be honest, guys, they're going to be similar. So let's figure out why they're similar. So if I look, I have a small triangle and this larger one again. So if we notice here, so now that we can see where they are, do you guys see how they share that top angle there? And then we have parallel lines, and I hope you're thinking, oh, I know parallel lines create certain kind of angles. Well, this angle here and this one here, they're called corresponding, right? And we know that they are congruent. So yes, by angle, angle similarity, my triangles are congruent. Now let's solve for x here. So if I focus in on that smaller triangle, I know that this bottom side here, x plus 2 corresponds to x, um, x plus 14 on the larger one. Okay, now if I look at this side here, my small one, 10, I know that corresponds to this whole side here. So what is that whole side? It's 10 plus x. 10 plus x. Now we just cross multiply like we've done before. So let's start with the easy one. I'm going to get 10 times x plus 14. And then this side here, I'm going to have x plus 2 times 10 plus x. This is kind of a doozy, but it's all right, we can handle it. So on this left side here, let's distribute. We get 10x plus 140 equal to, now I hope you guys remember from algebra, we're going to have to FOIL. Remember what FOIL means? Take my first times each other, so I'm going to get 10x I'm going to take my outsides times each other. x times x is x squared. My insides, 2 times 10 is 20, plus your last. 2 times x is 2x. All right, now let's just simplify here. Don't freak out. The left side stays the same for now. And let's just combine like terms over here. We have an x squared. Now I'm going to combine these two terms. So 10x plus 2x is 12x plus 20. Now, how do we remember how to solve a quadratic? We need to get, we need to set our equation equal to zero. So let's bring everything to the right side. So let's subtract 10x from both sides. And I'm left with 140 equals x squared plus 2x, because 12x minus 10x is 2x, plus 20, and then subtract 140, minus 140. So then finally, I have my equation, 0 equal to x squared plus 2x uh, minus 120. Okay, so far so good. Now you can either use the quadratic formula, but just to kind of save time, I'm going to help you FOIL it. So remember, or factor it, I should say. I know I'm going to have an x and an x. Now I have to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 120 and add to 2. So when numbers end in a zero, I'm going to always think 10. Well, what times 10 gives me negative 120? 12 does, okay? So I know I'm going to have a plus and a minus because one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. So 
So when I add those two numbers up, they have to equal positive 2. So I know the positive has to be the bigger number, giving me a positive 12 and a negative 10. Okay, and then remember, we set these guys equal to 0. So x plus 12 equals 0, x equals negative 12, x minus 10 equal to 0, x equals 10. And I have a negative distance for my triangle side. So this B right here, guys, negative 12. No, it can't. So that one goes away, leaving us with x equals 10. I know that got long, and I really apologize. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you're also very good from Skolmeyer right now. Um, we'll see you Monday. Have a good rest of your day.